So being as Glenn and Matthew have the soldering videos under control, I thought I'd do a little video on the options that we have when it comes to joining those nicely soldered boards together, the terminals that we're likely to come across and the various cabling options that we have. So what we'll do, we'll have a look at the various options that are available to us, have a little chat about pros and cons of each one, where we can use each one, and then we'll take a couple of them and we'll have a look at how we make the the cables that are going to connect everything together. Now it's not going to be an extensive list or an exhaustive list, um, just the more common things that I personally have seen while or, and used while building my droids and as well as sort of those that I've seen with, with other people's droids. So we'll start with the terminals that we're most likely to see soldered to a PCB. Here in the middle, by far our most common, these are the DuPont male connectors. So pins that stick out, soldered onto the PCB, that we stick a female DuPont cable onto. Nice and simple. And it just pops on like that. Dead easy. So, but we may also see the female DuPont connectors. So, very similar. Row of sockets soldered onto the board. And again, attached with DuPont cables, but this time we use the male ones. Everyone tends to have DuPont cables lying around. They're fairly ubiquitous with most things of electronics and Arduino at the moment. Now you'll see the difference that's most noticeable between the, the male DuPonts and the females is that your height when you're using the socketed ones connected to the circuit board of your total is going to be much higher than when you're using the females. That's why it tends to be, more often than not, we will see the male headers soldered on. One of the other options that you have um, is these. This is a JST connector or Japan solderless terminal. Now they are available in different pitches but these particular ones are 2.54 millimeter or 0.1 of an inch um, and these exactly match up with, with the same pitch as DuPont connectors and the pitch of most terminals on commercially available PCBs. Now anyone that's done much in the way of 3D printing is probably very familiar with the JST connections. Now they are a little bit more fiddly, they are a little bit more delicate, but the advantage that they do have over the DuPont connectors is that you can't get things the wrong way around. There's two little tabs on the male which correspond with two little female cutaways so everything slots in very nicely and you can't get it the wrong way around or backwards at all. It just won't go in. Now when we're looking at servos or truthfully any DuPont header that only has three pins another option that we have available is something called the Futaba connector. Now I think that's how it's pronounced, it's how it's spelt, I'm more than happy to be corrected. Now the difference between the two, if we have a look at this male end, is you can see just on one side there is a little tab that comes off the end that isn't there on the male DuPont connector. Now what this means is that on the female there is a small groove just to uh, just to the side and again this means that things can't get wired the wrong way around you're never going to uh, cross your signal and your ground with your with your servos so next we're gonna have a quick run through of the crimps that are available to terminate single cables or to keep sort of the ends of multi-core cables as single terminals rather than the plugs that we were seeing with the, the DuPonts and the JSTs. So there's, again, there's, there's a selection of things that we can use. We've got things like this. Now that is, is what's got a wire ferrule and that just keeps everything nice and tidy, keeps multi-strand cable where it should be and you would use that for inserting into something along the lines of, um, of a screw down terminal. So, so oops, that's the kind of thing that we would be be using that in. Next up we have these. These are quick disconnects. We've got the male and the female or the tab and the receptacle, however we want to call them, and they can slot together like that to put two ends of a cable together, but as it says in the name, 
it allows us to, to take them apart fairly simply. This is a butt connector and this allows us to permanently connect two cables together. Not my favourite piece of kit because I could just get a longer cable, but they are yeah, potentially useful for, for emergency repairs and they tend to come as part of a pack if you get sort of multiple connectors. The ones we're going to see more commonly are the ones that we use with, with screw terminals. So we've got the spade bit or the fork bit, um, whatever you want to call it, um, and then there's the ring terminal. Now, these are going to be attached to things like our fuse boxes, or sort of as, as an example, that's a, an example of a fuse box. Let's just make some room. Now, yes, I know that this is the the uh, the negative return but but just to show you sort of the the difference of how things look with the terminals attached so with this one we've got a ring terminal it looks nice um, it looks pretty here we've just got bare wire wrapped around it, it doesn't look pretty it looks ugly there's a risk of things touching it shorting it um, when it becomes loose it's very easy to come apart it can start to fray start to short across other things not safe, not nice. Um, with the ring terminals we can make things quite loose and it's still not going to come away. We've got chance to find the rattle, to find the, the problem and cinch it down, get it fixed. You don't quite have that security with the fork bits but it is still a much neater job than just wrapping bare wire around things. If we're spending all this time making the outside of our droid look pretty, getting the paint job perfect, there's no reason the inside shouldn't be wired nicely, that the wires shouldn't be run in an organised fashion and the inside just shouldn't look like a rat's nest of cabling. Just a quick note before we go on. The current carrying capacity of, of these terminals or the, the the current at which these guys can handle is very much dependent on which side we use and obviously which size cable you've got going through it. So you can get these from sort of just a few amps all the way up to, to many, many amps. I mean, they'll use cable terminals on cables in substations. Different bits of kits to these, they tend to be put on with explosives rather than a little ratchet crimping tool, but just to say that generally speaking you can find a one of these to style of crimps to whatever current you're going to need for a droid with the the dupont the jst connectors you're never going to get something much more than a 22 gauge cable into them so you we wouldn't want to run anything more than two and a half three amps through any of those now, the last type of connectors I'm going to mention for today are the XT connectors. So, this is male and female XT60, and we've got XT30s there as well. Now, anyone that's done a lot of RC stuff will instantly recognise these. They're regularly used in battery terminals. Um, they can be used in high current areas. The, the name kind of sort of gives you the current they can handle. The XT30s will take 30 amps, the XT60s will take 60 amps, and the XT90s will, will take 90 amps. They, they are soldered on rather than crimped on. This is the only one that we've looked at so far. That is a solder joint. And again, they are shaped in such a way that they can only go on the right way, not the wrong way. They've also got little markers, negatives, and positives, so you know which round you, which way around that you're connecting them. More often than not, you'll see these. I use these for my batteries that I use in my egg droid, the 39.1% droid, um, and I just use a um, a 3S18650 battery pack that I just solder up. Nice, easy batteries to be using, but say these are the connectors that I use. I always know I'm going to get them the right way around and they can always take a, a lot of current. So just before we start looking at crimping on some terminals and having a look at some of the cable options that we have, um, just a quick look at the tools. Now this is my pair of ratchet crimpers. Um, 
they're not silly expensive. You can get silly expensive ones if you really want them. You can get cheaper than this. I think these were about £20 on Amazon and they came with with a lot of crimps. Also came with various jaws or dies that can be swapped out for different crimping jobs. The I've never used any of the really expensive ones. I've never had a problem with these. They've, they've always served me right. I have used some of the cheaper sort of thin jawed non-ratchet versions and I have had less than optimal results from them. So these ones, yeah, I, I highly recommend a set of these. It just makes life a whole lot easier. The only other crimp tool that I do use is this. Um, now, rather than a, sort of a straight sort of down crimp, this is a rectangular crimp, so it closes on four sides. Um, I only ever use this for the the wire ferrules when these are going on the end. It's obviously it's a lot of kits for just one type of terminal but it came free with the terminals. Um, again I think it was about £15 on, um, on Amazon but came with about 1200 terminal crimps so at the end of the day for making the inside safer, prettier, easier to manage. In my view it's it's worth having. So we'll look now at doing some, some crimped on ends. So we'll start easy, um, or well, it's all easy, but we'll start with the easiest and we'll go with the wire ferrules. Now I've quickly soldered a screw down terminal block onto the back of this scrap board. Um, so we'll, we'll make some terminals that we can put into there. So all we need is our wire and one of our ferrules and obviously our crimp tool which I've put down somewhere. There we are. And there we go. So it just couldn't get any simpler. Strip the end of the wire and just pop the wire ferrule on the top. It generally won't go past the insulation um, if you've got the right size, they are available in different sizes, different colours. Um, I'm using the white ones today because I very rarely use them, so I've got lots left over. And then, couldn't be any simpler, we just open the crimp, crimper, pop the tool over the top. Uh, you can see it's just all the way down to the end, and just tie it up, and it's that simple. We can then do exactly the same with our other piece, we're putting two terminals on, again stripped, on it pops and just pop that crimp on and it's that simple. From there they should slot nicely into our terminal blocks he says there we go, pops in nicely, and then they will just screw down. Now, I'll show you with these ones. Sometimes, so if you're using the smaller terminal blocks, um, then they can just be a little bit long. You can just take a pair of snips, just watch your eyes, and just take the very end off and shorten them. And then that one will pop all the way in as far as we want it to be. And again, can be cinched down. Nice and secure. It keeps all of those little frayed copper ends at the end of a wire all in one place. The risks of shorting against the, the one next to it are minimal. And it just keeps things nice and tidy. So next simplest form of crimp is any of the the forks, the, the rings, the quick disconnects or butt connectors. So what we'll show you with this, I've taken the the cable that I had on that, that fuse box and what we'll do is we'll put a ring terminal on the other side. Now because this was stripped just to, to wrap all the way around it is too long so I'll just quickly snip some cable off. I'll do that out of shot just because I'm over the bin and don't like bits of copper strand flying around. 
so that's been cut back nice and short um, enough that when it goes on see you don't want it to be interfering with the ring it's a bit long I'm going to take a bit more off that but when it goes into the crimp you want to be able to just about see it um, coming out of the end but it certainly doesn't want to protrude or to cause problems now with the appropriate die in the crimp um, now for this particular one see it is color coded the color coding is related to the size of the crimp not the color of the crimp um, this one I'm actually going to do on the the medium size one the the red one and literally all it is is it goes into the jaw just start to cinch it down make sure that the cable isn't pulling back out and then just crimp down and there we go and that's that crimped on now you can see with that that compared to the other one there is some some crimp marks across it now some of these crimps do come with with heat shrink on some don't these are ones that do and all I've done with this is given it a little bit of heat and this has just got rid of these nasty wrinkles even the ones without the heat shrink you can sometimes use heat to get rid of the nasty um, crimp wrinkles so before we go on we'll just have a chat about the cable choices that that we have available to us um, now as I said most people will have some DuPont cables lying around if you haven't got them now by the time you've done much of the electronics in your droid you no doubt will now most people are going to have something like this a, a DuPont sort of cable multi-core cable which are loosely sort of stuck together you can pull them apart but usually always single terminals on the end now the issue I have with this is if I want a five core cable if I'm going to run a five core cable I might as well have a solid five block on the end of it because there is a risk that you miswire it this one interestingly was done by accident but you can see I've got the grey and the purple miswired and with the with the solid connector yes I can put it on backwards but there's only two ways I can do it the right way and the wrong way whereas if you've got single cables or single terminals there's a whole host of ways that you can get in wrong. You can sort of miss out terminals, work out, trying to work out where the last one goes. You can, yeah, there's, there's just a lot of ways of getting it wrong. It's, it's more challenging to get it in as well. That's why I prefer making my own cables rather than relying on, on bought ones. It means that I can run them at exactly the right lengths. I generally get to pick between the colors when sort of using sort of homemade, sorry, not homemade, bought DuPont cables I've generally got not the right colours that I was looking for so if I'm making my own I can pick and choose my colours generally and I can make everything the same through the droid. Now sometimes I'll just use cable off a reel these are see, these are just 24 gauge reel cable um, I've pulled five strands off and it's just got a little piece of heat shrink holding it together but you can use cheap and easily available cables this one here is is a six core alarm cable that I've pulled one of the cores out of um, makes for a nice cable you can see that it's a lot narrower than using the DuPont ones and and it does tend to to run easier in in most directions trying to get this to to turn a corner it'll turn in one plane but not in the other um, which does make that more of a challenge um, and, and this one, this is uh, Cat 6 or Cat 5 cable, I can't remember which, is, which one it is. Um, it comes as an 8 core cable, um, I've just pulled some of the cores out of it, kept the, um, the outer on and it just keeps things nice and tidy. Um, this stuff is, is used to cable buildings and I mean I have this by the kilometre just from roll ends that, that people have given me, so I mean if anyone wants any just let me know I can do meters of the stuff for free um, just let me know well done to those of you that have uh, made it this far I understand it's not the most uh, exciting of subjects but we're nearly at the end now and what we're going to do now is look to 
to crimp up a, a DuPont connector. Now, the males and the females all work the same, and it's the same for for the JST connector. So, I'll not do all. I'll show you the. I'll show you one, and and that should pretty much let you know what you need to do with all of them. So, when you're making a DuPont connector, um, whether you're using male or female, the actual housing is the same. Um, you can get these as wide as you want. You can also get them in double rows. Um, usually, they will have. I don't know if you can see that a small arrow on one of the the terminals. You can use that as you wish. I tend to use that as my ground arrow. Um, it all depends on, on what you're using them for, but for me I always put the ground in there where cabling will allow. So the difference between the male and the females with these are which actual connector we use on the inside. So that's the males and that's the females. They tend to come on these little metal tabs that we just need to break off. They can be useful for little solder tabs, so, so don't always throw them away. And, and that leaves us with our little crimp connectors. Now, some of you will be able to see that I've changed the jaws in my crimping tool. And, and these are the jaws that I use for crimping DuPont connectors. Um, everything is, is labelled um, when you get them, so you should be able to work out which, which one's which. Now, what we need to know about the crimps is what we can and can't crimp and what we do want to crimp where. I'll just get one of the males off just because it's going to be a little easy for me to show you because I can hold the end while I'm showing you. So, this first set of flanges here, they are going to hold the insulation of the cable. The second set of flanges here are going to hold bare cable. This little clip here is what holds the connector in the housing. What we don't want to do is, is interfere with this and crimp this. So, effectively, this is the furthest point that we want crimping. Everything else wants to stay as normal as it can do, having gone through the crimper. So what we do is we take our crimp. Now sometimes these can be a little bit wide and just a little squeeze of the back crimps can help it slot in. We're then going to open our crimp and just slot the crimp tool in and I'm just going to push that down just till I've got it locked in there and I can check this side to make sure that I've got the right amount of crimp just sticking out and I'm not going to interfere with anything I don't want to. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pop a crimp on this little voltmeter that we've got here. So put the crimp in the tool, I can see where I'm going. At least I can, depending on how the camera's gone. So I just slot this then into the end of the crimp and then tighten the crimp and let everything down. You can see that that first flange is holding the insulation and the second flange is gone onto bare wire. I have pre stripped these cables, and we can see there. So you don't need a huge amount poking through. And what we'll do is we'll do the next one now. So just a little pinch in the way I tend to find a little bit easier to get in. Sorry about keeping this going in and out of shot. We pop that into the crimp tool, just cinch it down. We can see the appropriate parts are in. We then want our other cable in just into those first jaws and cinch it down. I've gone a little bit further there but essentially they are crimped on nicely. And now all we need to do is get these into the housings. 
So if you look at the housing, there's a little window on one side and the other side is flat. That little window is what's going to catch that little tab that we were making sure wasn't going to crimp and, and that's going to stop it pulling back out the ways. Now there's a big end and there's a little end we're not going to be able to get them in the little end so they're going in the big end with that tab facing up again flattish side and there's a tabbed side and that's just going to slot in there. Now sometimes they don't go in overly easily don't try and force it you're just likely to break a wire a couple of things could be going on sometimes when they come out of the crimper they're they're not quite straight and you just want to even it up a little bit sometimes particularly if you're using a a smaller gauge wire the crimp at the back can just sort of spread a little bit and and that can cause a problem for them getting in and just a little squeeze doesn't take much, just a little squeeze with a pair of pliers just to narrow the back end will just allow them to, to get in. We're not trying to squish or crush anything, we're just trying to narrow that little back bit down again. And from there, let's see, get this the right way around, that will then just, he says, no, still just a little bit wide. Should use bigger cable. And that will just slot in. You'll hear the click as it sits in seats into position. You can see that tab just moving ever so slightly there. And then we'll pop this one in. So we're gonna, that's gonna go in nicely. There we go. And that's slotted in there. And there we have our terminals and that should sit nicely onto our header pins. If they pop out the way, pop out the back, then you just not got them in far enough. And yeah, there we have it. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of DB UK. If there's any questions, I'm sure someone will find a way of getting them to me or I'm sure one of the other builders will be able to answer anything that, uh, that needs answering. Again, this is just stuff that I've come across while building my droids. Um, we'll have a little look on the inside of my dome in just a sec and I'll show you some real world applications, but I'm not an electrical engineer. Um, I'm actually a vet by trade and this is all just skills that I picked up while building my droid. Okay, thank you very much. So, as promised, this is a view of the inside of my dome. Um, it's still a work in progress, so there's still some tidying up to be done, but it just uh, shows us some real world examples of, of where some of these connections are. So, as you can see, I've got the servos shortened onto a Futaba connector. This way, if I ever manage to break a servo or um, blow one up, it's a quick and easy change out. I haven't got to uncable anything. The, the socket's right next to uh, right right next to to each servo um, we can see I've got some crimp connectors um, some some ring connectors on the main power takeoff for the dome um, and where the the power comes into the 5 volt regulator that's got the little wire ferrules on we're using let's find something a bit tidier we're using DuPont connectors on the Markduino boards and as well as the TESAs. Um, with the TESAs you can see there's more of that uh, alarm cable that I've been using and, and that's pretty much that. That is the inside of my dome.